again, this is another video on uh, testing of electrical systems. Uh, today we're going to look at earthing and bonding of PV arrays, should you or shouldn't you. Of course, that all depends on whether the, the, the system is an exposed conductive part or an extraneous conductive part or whether it's not a conductive part at all. There is a test we can do to find out. It's important we do the test um, because obviously sometimes if the system is in contact with something that's metal, we should then be bonding it back to the rest of the electrical system. If it's not in contact, then it just becomes a metal part. You could argue that the PV panels could produce a potential, but what we need to remember is PV panels are generally class two equipment. You wouldn't earth class two equipment and you wouldn't bond class two equipment. So we can forget about that. So the important thing is that we connect um, an, a lead to the rails on, on the array, and we also need to remember that we've got to do it several times because there's sets of rails. So one panel would have two rails on it, we need to move on to the next set of rails. So we might need to do the test several times. What we need to do for the test is an insulation resistance test is the easiest way of doing it because all of us have got insulation resistance testers. We need to connect one cable to the earth rail, um, uh, to the um, PV rail, and one cable to an earth terminal, a known earth. Okay. What we do, the calculation is, we normally run at 230 volts. We try and prevent any kind of currents in the house rising above 10 milliamps, okay? So if we use Ohm's law, 230 divided by 10 milliamps gives us 23,000 ohms. So anything that we measure, which is measured below 23,000 ohms, becomes an extraneous conductive part, and anything above that we can forget about because it's not going to introduce this, this 10 milliamps of, of current if there is a fault. So we can also now think about our body. Our body would make up part of that resistance. What they say is that from fingertip to fingertip, we've got a resistance of a thousand ohms. So from our 23,000 ohms, we can now take a thousand away. So we're now looking for a measurement of 22,000 ohms between the rails and a known earth. Anything less, it needs bonding. Anything above, we can just forget about it. Okay, so what we need to do, I've prepared earlier, I've connected a cable to the array. So it's on one of the rails on the array. And you can see I've got my other cable connected to a known earth. I set my insulation resistance tester to 500 volts. I now give it a test, push the button, and we've got a resistance of 0.07. Okay, so 0.07 is 70,000 ohms. That's way above 22,000 ohms, so that's telling me that that system does not need bonding. You could argue that, can you touch it from a, a Velux window? Even if you can touch it from a Velux window, it's still just a piece of metal. So there's still no need to bond it at all. If it was on a metal roof, the story might be a little bit different, and I'm gonna do a video about that a little bit later.